Now, to the risk of losing my French nationality, I decided today to take two of the most iconic French sausage recipe and turn this into party snack meatballs for Christmas. What do you think? It's kind of an idea. Let's go. <laughs> So what are these two super iconic sausage? Number one is called the chipolata, aka the chipo. It's a pure pork sausage with just salt and pepper, and it is more French than French. It is an iconic sausage that has been around since I'm a kid. It's in every shop, every fridge, every barbecue, every sandwich. Everybody in France knows that sausage, full stop. You can ask any French you want. If you say, what is a chipolata? Ah, sausage. The other one, the merguez. Interestingly, this is a spicy lamb sausage coming from North Africa. With all the influences from Tunisia, Morocco and Algeria we have in France, these have been imported and ever since I was born, they somehow became super famous. And now every shop you go to, every barbecue at home, whatever, every sandwich, you have a choice. Oh, do you want the chipolata or the merguez or both? <laughs> it's kind of that strange thing. And people love these things. I love them. I've, you know, I'm born with it. It's just like such, such a thing. So you need to know how to make it. So what we're going to do to make things simple and this story of meatballs, we're going to uncomplicate the thing. We're going to be ditching the machine to make the sausage. Uh, we're going to ditching the intestine and we're going to concentrate on the actual force meat. I've got two recipes for you that I've taken one of my favorite master charcutier to make sure you're going to have a real taste of the chipolata and a real taste of the merguez. Let's go. Now, before we can begin, of course, you're going to need some form of a uh, meat grinder or mincer or whatever it's called in your country and this is the attachment for the KitchenAid but you can use a hand one if you want. You're not going to do this by hand, sorry, with the knife it just doesn't cut it, you're going to need one of those. So this is the first part, this is where it begins. Okay, now for the recipe, let me show you first the chipolata. So let's discover the secret of the recipe number one, the chipolata, the most iconic French sausage made in the style of the master charcutier, pure pork. We're using pork shoulder, only the lean part, and the meat has to be pre-seasoned with salt and pepper the day before. You can do it on, you know, a few hours before, just when you do it, if you want, it's not gonna, you know, drastically change, but if you want to do the things properly, uh, in charcuterie, you have to do this before. It's called maître au sel. What's so particular about that sausage is the fact that you mix lean meat with pure pork fat, this is hard fat, or fat back as it's called. When you grind this or you mix this, you mince the meat first and then the fat separately, and then add them together, it gives the force meat a very specific texture and bite to it with a good taste. Now the quality of the meat and the fat you're gonna, you're gonna choose is also gonna define the product, okay? So let's start easy and let's make this one. All what you need to do with that one is to pass the meat first through your machine here, if you, you meet a you meet, uh, grinder, let's call it like this, and then the fat. But before you start, let me tell you that hygiene in charcuterie is paramount. Your machine must be super clean and disinfected, so is your bowl, so is your hand. Wash your hand thoroughly because really it's important. Anything with raw meat, raw products like this in charcuterie is super important. It's fun, but you need to make sure everything is clean, okay? So you're gonna start easy. Not too fast, and I'm gonna start passing the meat through. And there it goes. And I'm gonna go with the lean meat first. As soon as the meat is done, we're now gonna put the fat, of course. But the fat is gonna be on its own. And you're gonna see it's gonna be looking very, very different. This all that white stuff that's gonna come in. See, look at that. And here we are. We are done. This one is super simple. You can see that you have the lean meat on one side and then the fat. So I'm going to put a paddle attachment in there and we're going to delicately mix everything together and we're going to be ready. I'm going to store this in the fridge. This is the paddle attachment. I'm just going to spend maybe a minute or so and you're going to see that the meat, you see how it starts to be kind of sticky, gooey? And this is the collagen extract you know, that's being extracted from the meat and it makes that kind of mixture that's going to be really perfect for our meatballs, okay? After a minute or so, you're done, and you get that typical texture of the chipolata. As you can see, the pieces of fat are really on the side of the meat, which is absolutely brilliant. So I'm gonna store this in the fridge, and we're gonna make the other one. And now for the second recipe, the merguez. This is much more 
complex, plenty of colors and spices that really reflect the, the beauty of North African cuisine. So you've got the mint, you got some paprika powder, you got some cayenne pepper, you got some harissa, some garlic, olive oil, Moroccan, uh, you know, spices and two types of meat. You can make it with just lamb, but this is a recipe that uses beef and lamb and you need plenty of lamb fat as well. This is very important, especially when you make, when you make this sausage mixture. For the process, it's going to be exactly the same. We're going to first grind or mince all the meat and then add the spices. That's it. To win some time, I've already grinded the meat. And this is the mix of beef and lamb. And this is using the coarse grid attachment. Okay, you want a coarse kind of mixture like this. Now, it's always the same in charcuterie. You start with the meat and then you put the seasoning. Now, of course, with this one, there's a lot of things. But it doesn't matter. You're gonna first put everything and everything is very precisely measured. I will give you the measurement. And this is one of the key. Uh, in charcuterie, it has to be precise to have the right test. It's very, very, very important to have the right grammage. If you don't, there's too much salt or not enough or whatever. And this one here has got plenty of things to go with. So you've got the cumin, you've got the pepper. Look at this. There's so much spices in there. I can't even see the meat. Okay, I'm going to keep on going. Look, there's a bit of olive oil you need to put, a bit of garlic as well. The mint there, actually, that's interesting. Look at that. Up. Typical, typical North African cuisine. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. And now when I've got everything, we're just going to use the paddle attachment and mix everything together. That's it. Everything is in here and we're ready to mix. Now that paste here, that chili paste, it's called Arisa. If you don't know it, it's kind of a mild chili paste. It is very unique. And I think it's from uh, Tunisia. There's different versions. It's such an excellent thing to have for any kind of Northern African cuisine. And you can mix it in like this in the mixture and it really adds a very specific flavor. So same thing here, we're going to spend on low speed a few minutes until it all gets together. Now an extra thing that you can do, as you saw, it was actually in the recipe, um, but maybe for sausages, that you can add a little bit of water, just about 50 ml or something like this, just to make sure because there's so many spices and dry ingredients that you want to get the right amount of moisture in your mix and you don't want something that is bone dry, especially if you make the meatballs afterwards. Up, oh, there you go. We are done. Both of the force meat mixture is finished. They've been resting 30 minutes in the fridge and I'm really so pleased with the result. Now this is so good looking when it comes to Chipolata, how it looks. Now this is it. Same for the merguez, it's absolutely so genuine. I can't tell you, even the smell of both of these things is crazy. I'm gonna cook this on a, you know, baking or baking sheet in the back in the oven. I'm just gonna roll both like I did on this one here and cook them in the oven, maybe for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, see how we go. And then we're gonna try them out. Okay, so here they are after the oven and 180 degrees was way, way too low. So I would say definitely 200 degrees or more for 15 minutes. Now, I'm a bit disappointed that the red color was really, it's extremely fatty. And after some time, it kind of became a bit brownish, like this, which is not the expected uh, outcome. I like this one, and this is the one we're going to start with for the test. So let's pick one of those and see how it tastes like. Well, I guess it's just a meatball, nothing super special. I want to cut inside, see how it's the sausage look. Yeah, kind of whitish, and now the taste. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. What's missing? Mustard. Okay, here we are. Look at that. Boom, mustard. Now you need mustard <laughs> with with a shipo. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's it. This one. Okay, put one back. Shipolata. Perfect. This is spot on. This is the exact taste I was expecting. Next. Hmm. This one has really lost that bright red color that I really like from the merguez. So it's kept in the sausage. I hope that inside, uh, different. Look at this. Oh, you can see the, oh, it's an authentic. Huh? You can see the herbs at least. No, it's got a good color. Let me try like this and then a little bit of harissa. First plain. Mm. Right. That's, again, it's got perfect, oh, that little 
spiciness, it's full of taste, you know what I'll do? Arisa, this is like that special, special chili, chili paste, I think from Tunisia or something, a classic in France. And with a bit of Arisa, oh, there, got it. This is snackish, it's for a Christmas snack. Mm. A little bit of a cooked topping, yeah. So be very careful, I think this one needs to be really undercooked to keep the juiciness, the oiliness, and other flavor, you don't want it dry. And I, I forget this about these sausages actually. Merguez, they are great when they're juicy, but if they're too dry, not that great. Mm. But it tastes amazing. I am so glad I did that video because honestly, these two recipes turning the sausage recipe into meatballs had transported me back to France. It is spot on. The chipolata with simple kind of, you know, pork, salt and pepper, typical French with that bit of mustard. It's really a slice of France and the merguez, it's full of, you know, fragrance, the spices and the, the spiciness and the heat lingers in, in the palates. You know, you, you eat those things and they're beautiful and you can even pair them with the famous couscous, which is a full dish. And a Tunisian American couscous, I'll put a link on the video description with slow cooked vegetables and lamb and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and it is a wonderful dish, but a wonderful addition. And to finish, I would say that this is only the entry point, okay? That to show you that you can make any recipes that you have on sausages without making the sausages. Because you can still enjoy the taste. And that has been verified right here with this video. And that was a beautiful experience. But anyway, I will see you next week for another pre-Christmas video. So let's get ready because there will be a side, there will be a main, there's plenty of exciting things to come. There will be a dessert, of course. And shall I say the word champagne huh, to be coming for this recipe? But more on that later. See you all next week. Bye-bye.